a little bit of information I want to start with. When you're wiring the 60814 Harbor Freight one and a half horsepower compressor electric motor, you look at the engine, or I'm sorry, the motor opposite of common sense. Because when you look at the motor on the on mounted on the uh, air compressor, you need the pulley as viewed from the front to go counterclockwise. But look closer at the bottom of the diagram. It tells you all rotation directions are lead end as viewed from wires at the back of the motor. So contrary to common sense in America, you would actually wire this electric motor following the clockwise wiring in order for your pulley to be turning counterclockwise. So I fell for that little joke the first time and then I saw that note and I was like, oh, okay, well we gotta, we gotta change that. Something that was not clarified um, in the instruction booklet nor on the side of the sticker of the motor because basically this wiring diagram I'm showing you now is the sticker is the information on the sticker okay for everyone who's not familiar with wiring your own engine or sorry motor look at the L1 L1 P1 it hooks up whether you're doing 115 volt or 230 volt. L1 on this particular diagram is your black hot wire from your outlet. Let me repeat that. L1 is the hot wire from the outlet. So you would just connect on this particular diagram your black hot wire from your outlet to your P1. Then you would take P2, P3, and P, or, and, I'm sorry, P2, T3, T5, twist them together. And then your, you would have T2, T4, T8, and your white wire from your outlet. So keep that in mind. The white wire come from your outlet will be connected to the 2, 4, and 8. And then of course your green or ground wire would go to the green bolt inside the back of the... And here's another trick they play on you. Your wiring hookups are not in here. Most electric motors I've worked with, you put, remove this cover. All that does is give you access to the back of this electric motor to bring your wires out on the side away from, or uh, underneath this little cover. And you can see all those wires in the motor are black, but they have heat shrink on them. So if you can see that, that shows you what they are. So you know which ones to hook up. You twist them together with these, I think people call these wire nuts. I went ahead and put zip ties on them just so they're less likely to want to pop apart on me. Follow the diagram and watch. Counterclockwise rotation, which is counterintuitive when you start reading them instructions. If you're not paying careful, careful attention, that's what's going to happen to you. But you're going to wire it up and it's not going to go the right direction. Um, it also does say in the instructions start the motor and run the motor with a no load, no belt, nothing on its very first fire up. Um, I did go around and kind of just nut and bolt, check all the fasteners on this to make sure it was snug down. And there were a couple that needed just a little, you know, eighth of a turn or something to get them snug, but I wanted to make 100% sure it doesn't rattle itself loose. But I got my ground wire. I don't know if you can see it, and there's a green. One of the bolts that holds that cut, uh, housing on is green. So that's your ground, and you just hook it up via the wiring diagram with those wire nuts and it's good to go uh, information I wanted to give <clears throat> and I suggest I'll try to put it in the uh, 
details below. But when you have a compressor, or call it a compressor motor, the compressor part of this is designed to run at a, a given RPM. For some unknown reason, and this is a made in USA compressor, it doesn't tell you anywhere on this thing, nor on that wheel or a pulley, what is the recommended RPM range for this engine. Um, it's very important that you don't over RPM one of these compressor motors because it causes excessive heat, can cause uh, damage to your rings, your head, and generally cause it to perform poorly. So, <clears throat> upon finding, you know, some information online, most compressors should run in an RPM range of 600 to 1000 RPMs. I had found one reference to a compressor motor that looked like mine, but I could not verify whether it was the same one. It showed a max RPM of 1050. I don't want to even get close to that max range because I don't want to take a chance on hurting this thing in any way. So here's my information about trying to put your motor with the correct pulley. Here's what you do. There are formulas you can find online if you love doing math or find one of the free online calculators like we did. Basically, I have selected to try to get my RPM somewhere in the 800 to 1000 range, which turns out great because this is a 10 inch pulley on the compressor motor. Now here's where you gotta do your input of your information. These electric motors can uh, have RPM anywhere between 1700 and 3600 RPM. Every manufacturer is slightly different. So what you do is you input that you have a 10 inch pulley on your compressor, you put in the RPM on this motor, electric motor is 3600 rotations per minute, and it'll tell you, if you play with the numbers, what size pulley you have to put on that electric motor to get your final RPM on your compressor. So with a 10 inch compressor pulley, 3600 RPM electric motor, I needed a two and a half inch pulley for this thing to run at 900 RPM operating. So again, <clears throat> you use the RPM of your electric motor the size of your, or diameter of your pulley on your compressor, it'll tell you what size pulley you need on your motor, your electric motor, so that your compressor doesn't over rev itself. So like I said, I got a 10 inch pulley with a two and a half on my motor, puts me at 900 rot RPMs. That's well within my 800 to 1000. I know I'm not pushing it too hard, and if it's, you know, happy and, and well lubricated, it should be in service for a long time. But I just want everybody to keep in mind that you can go online, properly set up a compressor, uh, you know, electric motor and pump, but there is some math involved and these compressor pumps are designed to work at a certain RPM. If you could get that specific information, because some of the bigger industrial size compressors they only turn 600 RPM. I'm assuming that's because they most definitely got two or more cylinder, like huge V-twin cylinders or something on it. Could it possibly have three cylinders? But just keep in mind that RPM range on most of these compressors is 600 to 1,000. Go online, find a calculator, do your uh, pulley sizing. The calculator we found actually allows you to put center to center, your shaft distance, sorry, shaft distance, center to center. You can add it in there with your pulley diameters. It'll even tell you what size belt to buy. So anyway, I just wanted to do an update on this compressor rebuild slash 
electric motor replacement. Um, it's been a challenge. It's been kind of interesting to get online and try to search down this information. Um, I just now finished the wiring hookups because I had to go exchange the uh, pulley, had to get a different belt, had to get some wire nuts and all that because I didn't have any with me. So uh, the motor is kicking on and running. Hopefully, fingers, toes, eyes crossed, once I put the belt on it and put a load on it, it'll continue to operate properly. So anyway, that's my next update. Hopefully I'll have a short video of it running soon. Uh, follow the instructions, definitely read the instructions when they're going to try to confuse you with the wiring diagram. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to try to load this up as an informational video on how to calculate your pulleys and all that. So anyway, thanks again for uh, watching.